this our center for advanced cosmetic surgery in mumbai india and today i'm going to talk to you about different act- options for face lifting the surgical and non surgical options sometimes uh, we get patients who are not even in their 30s who come to ask for a face lift so face lift is a surgery it's an option for patients uh, who are 50 years 60 years or above it's to be done when the skin has lot of looseness lot of sagging and it's not for people uh, who are in their 30s so that's why i thought it's uh, a good idea to clear some of the myths or misconceptions that people have about uh, face lifting to explain what is the difference between a surgical face lift what is a non surgical face lift and who are ideal candidates to undergo these procedures now if you look at this mother daughter photo which i have uh, shown in my previous presentation as well you will see that the daughter has a face which is very nice and tight there is uh, no sagging in any area of her face and that's why her face has the appearance of youth if you look at the face of her mother she has definitely certain areas like the nasolabial folds the area around the jowl or the under eye which is very loose and whenever uh, somebody has looseness of the skin we feel that that face is old or it's definitely not a young looking face or a face which looks fresh along with uh, this looseness of skin she also has loss of volume so if you look at the under eye area she has lost some fat from here so there is deep creasing uh, in the under eye area there is hollowness on the cheeks so loss of volume always accompanies loss of tone so either somebody may have loss of volume or somebody may have loss of tone both of which make the face look old or reveal our true age now these are some uh, photos of uh, some famous uh, personalities in the 30s 20s and and the recent photos so you can see that when they were in their 20s and 30s the face was nice and tight it had volume in all the areas so the under eye areas the temples the cheek areas they were all nice and tight you look at the gentleman on the right side and look at his chubby cheeks or you know the face has nice volume and it's all tight if you look at how they look now you can see that there are lines on the forehead there is hollowness on the cheeks there is loose skin which is appearing on the cheeks there are prominent laugh lines that are there there are prominent creases around the eyes the eyebrows are starting to droop so all these are signs of aging so what exactly causes aging so there are certain aspects of our face which contribute to make us look older one of course as i said is loss of volume and the second is loss of tone or sagging which is what has been shown in the diagram here so there are certain areas of our face which reveal visible signs of aging so there may be lines on the forehead there may be hollowing of the temple area some people may have hollowing in the under eye area some people may start getting very prominent lines in the laugh line area what are called as nasolabial lines somebody may have sagging of skin in the area under the lips which is called as the marionette area somebody may have sagging of skin in these areas which are called as jowls so whatever are the changes that happen in the face some of it is of course genetic so whatever facial changes the mother has or the father has similar changes may happen in their son or daughter some of these changes are also related to weight fluctuation so if somebody Uh, has been always 80 85 kilos and suddenly goes down to 50 55 kilos as the age advances this 20 35 kilo uh, shift of weight also can make the face look suddenly older so it's always a combination of two things loss of volume and loss of tone so how do we uh, re- rejuvenate the face or how do we recorrect the face so to reverse these signs of aging we need to do these four things reposition meaning whatever has sagged down we need to take it back to the correct location refill so whatever areas are hollow 
we need to fill them back release certain ligaments which are teethering which are pulling the face downward and refix them to a correct location so you can see in the photo that i have shown that even though we are seeing only the eye area and only the laugh line area still all of you if i ask 100 people 100 people will say that the face half on the left side is older and the one on the right side is younger the reason is loss of volume and sagging so whenever there is loss of volume and whenever there is loss of tone that is sagging the face looks older so now facelift has been described more than 100 years back it is not a new surgery facelift has of course uh, evolved over the period of time so when uh, plastic surgeons initially started doing facelift it was tightening only of the skin then we moved on to something called as a smash lift now smash is a deep layer of the face under the skin there is a layer which is called as the smash layer which is the superficial musculo aponeurotic system now there are certain types of face lifts as were described by dr paul tessier which work on this layer of the face now underneath this smash layer there is one more layer which is called as the deep plane so there are some techniques of facelift which work even at a deeper layer which are called as deep plane facelifts and of course there is a technique which is called as the max lift which was uh, described by dr tonard and dr varpal from belgium and i had the pleasure and honor of working with uh, both these plastic surgeons after my plastic surgery training and they described a technique called as a max lift so i am going to uh, discuss more in detail about a max lift than the other techniques so let us take a look at what are the options for tightening the face now the complete name of max lift is minimal access cranial suspension which means that minimal access so the incision is very small it is completely concealed in the hairline and cranial suspension which means that the tissues of the face are fixed in this point in this area on the scalp we have a very dense thick layer of tissue which is called as the deep temporal fascia so the whole premise or whole basis of a max lift is to take stitches from the temporal fascia all the way to the platysma which is the muscle of the neck to pull the neck tightly upward and one more suture to pull the tissues of the face upward and tie them or fix them here the advantage of this technique is that there is no cut behind the ear so the incision remains concealed these are doctors tonard and verpal and uh, this is me in 2020 now the principle of uh, this max lift is similar to the uh, ceiling bridge that we have here in mumbai so it also has uh, something called as the suspension principle so if you see that there are two central pillars in the triangular shape and there are the suspension cables which are used on either side to lift and suspend the bridge the max lift works on similar principles so the main important aspects of this treatment are that uh, it has no alteration of the sideburn so in a male what happens is if a male person does a face lift then the sideburn what males have it gets pulled behind that makes the face look unnatural nobody has sideburns uh, near the ear there is some skin which is between the sideburn and the ear if we do the traditional uh, face lift then the sideburn gets shifted back and it looks uh, very unnatural it doesn't look good so the advantage of a max lift is that it does not alter this important a uh, feature in a male so it does not alter the sideburn and secondly it has a very nice vector which is in the vertical direction so the skin and the smash layer is pulled vertically tight and it gives a maximum uh, youthfulness or freshness to the face so this is exactly how a max lift is performed so what i have shown here in red is the incision so the incision in a max lift is like a small zigzag incision which is concealed in the sideburn area this zigzag incision continues in front of the ear and then goes 
some portion of up from the face like the page of a textbook and the internal tissues what is called as the smash layer that is tightened now how do we lift or tighten the tissues there is a stitch which is taken in front of the ear this takes a deep fixation point at the deep temporal fascia the stitch first stitch goes vertically downward and comes back and is fixed to this point again the indication for using this stitch is to tighten the neck this stitch at this loop portion it goes through the platysma which is the muscle of the neck so it pulls this entire neck muscle upward and fixes it to this point the second point goes along this loop which is a little wider loop and curves back and fixes the tissues here again so this stitch 1 and stitch 2 are what tightens the neck and the cheek area of the face so the second stitch is important for correction of the jowl for pulling the marionette lines and the nasolabial folds and this gives a good tightening effect to the face and lower part of the neck uh, lower part of the face and the neck now there is one more stitch which can also be taken in some patients especially those who have a lot of sagging in the cheek area or in the malar area this stitch is called as the third stitch which fixes the tissues to the location around the orbit this stitch goes through the cheek fat and fixes it back or pulls it back to the cheek now in the older method of face lifting uh, the fixation was uh, done using surgical dissection so first the skin was elevated then the layer of muscle was elevated and then the underlying tissues were actually stitched together so there was lot of uh, separation of tissues there was lot of dissection which was needed and therefore the swelling used to remain for quite a long time almost like 6 weeks to 8 weeks uh, patients could not uh, socialize meet people because there was so much swelling plus what happens is there are five branches of the nerve which supply our eyebrow the upper eyelid lower eyelid the corner of the nose the upper lip lower lip the neck and these branches are all present in the layer under the smas so techniques which are sub smas which are deeper to the smas or the deep plane face lift there is always a chance of injuring any of these nerve branches so the eyebrow may stop moving the nose may stop moving or the lip may stop moving so the advantage of this particular technique of face lift which is the max lift is that we are much superficial we are above these nerve branches so the chance of injuring these nerves or causing any damage to these nerves is not that that much strong as in the subsmas techniques now i'm going to show you some case examples of uh, the results that one can have after a surgical face lift so this lady is 58 years old and she has all the signs of aging in the face so you can see that uh, there is hollowing in the under eye area the laugh lines are prominent there is hollowing in the cheeks and look at the neck there's lot of loose skin in the neck and there is this prominent area which is called as the jowl so when we performed a max lift for her you can see that the face is completely transformed what was the concern was the sagging of the face you can see that in the after photo she has a nice jaw line the laugh lines have reduced there is a nice volume on her face now so this hollow effect or aged look of the cheeks is corrected there is a nice uh, volume now on her face and you'll agree that the face looks at least 20 years 25 years younger so this has been achieved by use of a max lift technique if you look at her in the two third view you'll appreciate that the depth of the laugh line has reduced the sagging on the jaw line which is called as the jowl this has got completely corrected and the skin is now nice and tight so instead of having looseness on the face on the neck and lot of loose skin around the jaw line she now has a jaw line which is absolutely nice and tight this photo is taken one month after her max lift and you can see that the amount of uh, tightness that is there looks very natural so it is not something which makes you look unnatural if somebody has a face which is too tight or it's too too much uh, tightly pulled back it also looks unnatural 
the idea is to keep it natural not to make somebody look art artificial or unnatural this is the profile view and you can appreciate the changes that have happened in her neck the changes that have happened in her face you can see that before surgery she did not have a good jawline there was lot of sagging in the jowl there was lot of loose skin in the neck area and in the profile she actually did not have a properly defined jawline at all when we did her max lift and tightened the neck muscles as i told you you can see that because of the pull of the neck muscle backward there is a proper neck angle that she has now which was not there before and the actual definition of her entire jawbone right from the chin to the angle and upward this entire jawbone definition is now clearly visible you can see that she has a better volume also in the upper part of the face because whatever had actually come down that has got reposited back i have not done any fat injection on her face so whatever volume you see in the after photo that volume is because of her own tissues coming back to their original location or the original tissues getting lifted so friends max lift can give you wonderful wonderful uh, difference in appearance let's take a look at another example this gentleman is 48 years old and his uh, issue was that he had lost lot of weight he had lost around 15 kilos 18 kilos of weight and he was uh, concerned about Uh, the sagging appearance on his face and the hollowing on the cheeks that had developed after the weight loss so with the same treatment of max lift you can see in the photo taken one month later that this sagging on the face is now corrected the hollowing on the cheeks is now corrected so he has cheeks now which are nice and plain and the face looks at least 20 25 years younger if you look at him in the two third profile you can see that in the photo taken before surgery there is lot of hollowing in the area of the cheek the laugh line is very prominent and the neck looks loose so what he essentially had due to his weight loss was a lot of loss of volume so the face used to look sagging it used to look tired and you know it was not a fresh looking face you can see after the max lift that now his laugh line is almost completely gone there is lot of volume in the face the neck area has got nicely tightened so he now looks much uh, fresher he looks much younger and the face looks uh, appropriate it does not give the impression of somebody who has lost weight or it does not give the impression of somebody who looks tired now when we talk of non surgical options what are the non surgical options for tightening the face for so many years the only option for lifting up facial tissues or tightening the face was surgery but now we have a very interesting option which is called as a thread lift so if somebody is in the 30s or in 40s there is no need to directly rush into going for a surgery there is now an option which allows you to tighten your facial tissues uh, without any surgery and this option is called as a thread lifting let's take a look at how thread lifting is performed so for thread lifting we use threads which are not plain threads they have something called as a cog so these cogs are essentially like how a arrow has arrow heads similarly these threads have cogs the idea behind applying cogs on the thread is to provide something which can hold the skin and lift it up so early sagging can be very well corrected with the use of these cog threads now what happens is when the thread is introduced under the skin when it is introduced in a forward direction it passes easily after it reaches the point where we want it to reach when the thread is pulled upward all the cogs they lock on the under surface of the skin and these cogs are what pull the skin upward or that's what causes the skin to tighten up so these cogs lock on the under surface of the skin and they lift the skin upwards the effect of these cog threads remains for 1.5 to 2 years depending on the type and composition of the threads that are used the best threads available for lifting of different areas of the face are aptos threads these are from a, a country called as georgia these threads are in different uh, sizes and for different aspects of the face so we have a different type of threads uh, which is for the 
cheek lifting and volume of the cheek there is a different type of thread which is to lift the corner of the eyebrow there is a different type of thread which is used for lifting the mid face there are different threads for lifting the lower face so depending on whether you want to lift the eyebrow whether you want to lift the cheek or whether you want to lift the lower part of the face the entry points differ so at the entry point for eyebrow lifting is here which is inside the hairline the entry point for lifting the mid face or the middle part of the face is here and the entry point for lifting the lower part of the face is here so depending on where exactly the patient has sagging we can decide where to introduce the thread from and how to give a proper lifted appearance to the face and this lady is in her 40s and her concern was that after weight loss she was starting to have prominent lines in the laugh line area if you look at her in the two third profile you can see that there is lot of sagging in the lower part of the face the laugh lines are prominent there is drooping in the corner of the mouth uh, the jowl area is quite prominent so overall she has now a face which looks little older for her age and that's not what we want we want a face which should look fresh and it should look younger so she was still not a candidate for doing any surgery for tightening her face so i have done four threads on each side 1 2 3 4 on this side and 1 2 3 4 on the other side and with the effect of these eight threads you can see that the face is completely transformed she looks around 15 to 20 years younger after the face lift because the volume has come back to her cheeks initially there were lines on the cheek and the face had a lot of sagging so when we lifted the tissues back there is now a good volume on the upper part of the face the laugh lines which had become very prominent are now very much less the corners of the mouth are now at the same level instead of drooping down if you look at her in the two third view you will see that this entire bit which is sagging and loose this has all got lifted so now she has a beautiful jaw line which goes all the way from the chin the laugh line the corner of the mouth and the marionette area this entire area has got lifted up so this is the kind of effect that one can get with the use of cog threads these threads are made up of a material which dissolves it is disintegrated slowly in our body but it takes around 1.5 to 2 years for these threads to disintegrate and by the time these uh, thread materials they will disintegrate the skin is already fixed in those areas so thread lifting is a very very interesting option it's a very very commonly done procedure now and for individuals who are in their 30s and 40s and who are still not candidates for doing a surgery for tightening the face threads is an excellent indication now there is also something called as laser rejuvenation of the face so in terms of uh, tightening of the face we also have laser devices which emit light energy and this light energy helps in tightening uh, specific portions of the face these laser treatments are typically done at 3 week intervals or once a month and people may need four sessions five or six sessions depending on uh, the amount of tightness that they want each uh, laser treatment uh, session will have 2 3 days of redness on the skin and there are some uh, creams like a moisturizer or uh, tightening creams that are given to apply on the face after the laser treatment so laser is a good option for rejuvenating the skin it can help remove marks on the face so if you have any injury mark or any acne mark all these marks can be removed and laser can really help you get a flawless kind of a complexion or a flawless kind of a skin laser treatment is not a one time procedure laser is done at 3 week intervals and there are sessions depending on the looseness of the skin or depending on the number of marks that the patient has you may need four sessions five sessions six sessions that your doctor can tell you when he or she has seen your face now there are also some energy based devices which emit ultrasonic energy or radio frequency and these energies are used to tighten specific portions of the face so the machine has a handpiece uh, there is a gel which is applied on the skin 
and the handpiece is just kept in contact with your skin and then the button is pressed. This emits ultrasonic energy or radio frequency energy and this uh, tightens the collagen fibers in the skin and this is what gives tightness to the face. So these devices can be used for tightening these kind of faces. So again, not too much of sagging, but early sign of aging. So there was a little bit of double chin. The jowl has started to come up. There is a little prominence of the marionette line. And you can see that with the use of high intensity focused ultrasound, which is the long form of HIFU, we were able to tighten the neck skin or we were able to tighten the lower part of the face. And she now has a, a skin which is tighter the face looks younger, the double chin is lesser and the face has a overall appearance of youthfulness. Another two-third profile of a lady who is in her 50s who had started to get prominence of her laugh lines and the jowl area and you can see that after the uh, treatment with Haifu, the face is tighter, the laugh lines have reduced, the appearance of looseness or jowling on the face has reduced and overall the face looks tighter. So friends, uh, these were the surgical and non-surgical alternatives for facelifting. So if you go for a surgical option such as a facelift or a neck lift, be sure that you have adequate time in hand to rest and recover. After the surgery, uh, there is something called as a chin strap which is like a cotton belt which you have to wear. It goes like this around the neck and the face and there is a velcro on the top to fix it. And this is like a compression belt. What it does is it gives compression. The effect of this compression is to remove all the swelling in the cheeks, in the neck and it helps the skin get reattached to the muscle. And therefore, it is important to wear this uh, chin strap at least for 10, uh, 10 days to 15 days. You may be asked to wear it for few hours after the 10 day period. But for 10 days, you need to almost wear it like 24 hours. The stitches that are used after a face lifting surgery are dissolving stitches. The stitches typically dissolve in 12 days to 15 days. After the stitches have dissolved, you may be given scar removal gel such as silicone gel, which is to be routinely applied over the mark and a gentle massage is to be done every day so that the marks will fade away. So, you can uh, expect to be able to start meeting people or go out after three weeks post a facelift. Of course, those of you who are actors or those of who, you who are in front of the camera where you take uh, photos on high definition, then it's better to keep a gap of at least four weeks or a month after a facelifting procedure. For those of you who are young, who are in their 30s and 40s, as I told you, the main options revolve between use of cog threads, use of HIFU or use of UL therapy. Cog threads are very, very effective. They are targeted tightness. So I can uh, definitely uh, check what area of the face is loose and we can definitely put threads to tighten these specific areas. HIFU and UL therapy are more generalized. So if somebody wants to tighten the entire face, entire neck or the whole features, then HIFU or UL therapy works better. Of course, these non-surgical methods are not long duration treatments or they don't have the longevity of a surgery. If you do a surgical facelift and neck lift, you are sorted for 8 to 10 years. If you do non-surgical treatments, the longevity will be for 1 year, 1 and a half year, maximum 2 years. And after that, you will have to repeat these procedures. So if you are somebody who is uh, busy with work and who doesn't have the time for a surgical treatment, then maybe you can think of a non-surgical option. Of course, the older the individual, the more uh, laxity the skin has or the skin is quite loose. And in such kind of individuals, it's better to do a surgical tightening. Only if the person does not have time or does not want to do it at the present moment, we can offer non-surgical alternatives as a temporary measure to tighten the face. Of course, for younger individuals, surgery is not uh, a good option because the skin is not that much loose and the same degree of tightness can easily be achieved by non-surgical methods uh, without giving any incision marks. Therefore, in younger individuals, we prefer to do non-surgical 
methods of facial rejuvenation so friends uh, this was some information about uh, surgical and non surgical face lifting i hope uh, you found this session to be interesting and any other questions that you may have about these procedures uh, please feel to write to me in the comment box and i will uh, surely reply uh, back to your comments panama is saying i am from kerala hello thank you for attending our live session uh, i had uh, bushra also who was uh, saying hello to me hello bushra thank you also for attending this session so thank you i uh, guys if you have any other questions uh, feel feel free to write in the comment box and i will reply back as soon as i can mr sadbir sawant is saying hello hello mr sadbir thank you for attending did you find the session interesting so next week i am going to come back to you uh, again with uh, another topic of interest and uh, i will surely uh, reply to these questions uh, in the individual comment box so thank you all for watching today's live session and uh, stay safe and stay healthy good night